Arabic culture when it comes to households are very different in regards to how they use their house. What I mean by that is the living room is always a very central piece in the Arabic castle and it's always like very minimal uh, furniture like pillows on the floor sort of the old couch very sort of like casual sitting uh, but it's still like a very central piece because they spend majority of their time in the living room so that's why like having it at the entrance or like having like a ceiling area at the entrance like you have here I think is quite good it's very common in like Middle Eastern countries for you know the, like the parents to stay with the grandparents, the uncles, yeah. etc. All in one big house. Even after marriage, they, they still stay. Exactly. Okay. Usually, they actually what happens is the house kind of like expands every time like there's an addition to the family. So that's why it's really not uncommon when you see like Middle Eastern houses, like uh, Arabic houses, that the houses are like not painted, just bare concrete because they just like keep expanding them. It's, it's the way they do it because like they, there's no reason. To to like paint a house if you're just gonna keep like renovating it and expanding it etc. I would like to discuss in the next step. Okay. In the case of course Turkey one and mm -hmm. Morocco two. And the next step for us is to design the house including some restroom or shower room you know, kitchen and in this case we have structure but then exterior just painting is a little bit weak and also taping it's not eternal so we can provide some exterior finish the siding or some other, you know panel stuff or foundation it's not a bit great but more like a concrete block so interior is already finished we don't need any plasterboard like this this is actually yeah, this is the finish can we plywood for the interior instead of uh, OSB. OSB. Why do you prefer plywood over OSB for the interior? I think there's something more cultural, like the OSB is not used at home for us. And I heard like people are asking like, is this the finishing? Are we gonna see this at the end? So I thought maybe plywood would be something more acceptable for them aesthetically. I planned the like production of the panels and stuff in Turkey. It was nice, but we realized that we need a more like tolerance on the drawing to put the panels together. The I don't gaps know. in between. Yeah, yeah. Oh right. You didn't have to file it down. It's heavy, it is. Yeah. How heavy was it? It was okay for two people to like handle so it. I don't think it, the weight was ever an issue. No one was struggling to lift them. And then the door. We didn't do pre-made one like PVC because it was like a narrow opening, so we did it on the place with OSB. If you make a bathroom, then put that. You have to have a waterproof, then buy and then tiles, many layers. But if you use a unit, the bathroom inside is all waterproof. That's the exterior, you don't have to do it. Just set it and then connect by. When you install, to have like lumber pieces in between sandwich panels, so when you arrive, you can just screw mm. the bathroom yeah. unit. What about if the unit bed doesn't work? So we have to figure out you know, locally how to set. It's same for Europe. They don't exist. Really? Because Which one? Because you mentioned yesterday that the companies, they are in Europe. I was trying to think back, you know, even to France or Europe in general. I don't think I ever heard of a unit That's existing right. outside of, uh, of Japan. Yeah. So you got this one here, 83 pounds, 37 square meters. So you got two rooms, you can fit a queen bed there, two single beds, living area here, entry, kitchen. So this one is a master bedroom, and then is that the king size? Uh, queen, size? queen size. This is two singles? Two singles, yeah. Husband and wife and two kids. And then where is the main entrance? We put it here, so you get like an actual living space here. Do we still want to see this pattern or OSB from the outside? For example, this one, they have OSB, then they use yeah, polycarbonate. Nice. So you can still see the OSB from the outside. But you know, this one is no waterproof sheet on top of that. If you put waterproof sheet, sheet is all visible. Waterproof paint is enough, no? Yeah. Then we cannot see this on the outside. No. 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 They don't think this is a durable material. If you nail like corrugated metal sheet, it's already waterproof. No, that's no. the first thing. And then we need a gap. Yeah. There goes moisture, like a horizontal substructure here to put the corrugated part on outside. Is it necessary? Usually we do. The air you know, comes from, from the bottom and it dries up. Even if directly put that corrugated panel here, still we have a gap. Yeah, because so it's wavy. Because it's wavy, yeah, yeah. You get gap anyways. But we have to cover this part. So without any waterproof sheet, only corrugated sheet is that waterproof here. That's to be. This surface, yes, painted, painted. But then how to do this gap? But underneath, if you have the waterproof tape, maybe fine. 
One thing to point out is the interior walls, as you can see. Last session, we were thinking of like a drywall with stout frame, but then Hiroto advised us to keep it uniform, so use the OSB sandwich panels as well for the interior. Now, if we do that, we will have to make some modifications. Remember how we use the panel and the column and beams? And there's no point using the beams anymore because the roof will be supported by the panel itself. As you can see, the colors is the different panel type. The different panel type. I mean, same design, but they remove some like in and out opening to fit them together. For example, that yellow and green we are removing that green portion from the yellow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The doors, right? It will have to be off the ground. There will have to be a, a step. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If it's flush with the floor and then you have to cut away yeah. the bottom uh, bottom yeah. thing, then the panel will just fall out. I see actually they're quite popular in Japan for like doorways. You can put like these old triangle hedges against uh. the door so like people don't trip on mm. the thing. We said earlier that the, the belts might not be, you know, that secure for a long-term solution. So the quick fix for that is to remove the belts and put a plywood to join the two panels together, then screw it. That plywood piece, do you need it at every two blocks? Tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, you could have like the two pieces at the corners each part. You could have like one running at the bottom, one running at the top, and that just like kind of just connects it all and sort of keeps it together. Yeah. You can also consider that the zigzaggy pattern is like the temporary solution. After an earthquake happens, you build this one. So you still use the belt to maybe connect certain sections or something, and you use that for like six months. And after six months, if they need it to sort of stay longer, then you can fasten it with plates as well on the outside. I had an idea, like if you want to preserve this, we could take away the foam on the zigzag parts and then put in like a timber stud in the center, then it kind of locks them. That seems even more complicated though. Is it? Yeah, because then you have to drill that hole to, for the thing to fit in, no? In Japan, they cut the OSB and the foam separately. They put a metal piece between the foam, they cut the foam. Then when they uh, uh, yeah, put yeah, the panel, the finishing yeah. panel on top, there's already an there's opening. Already like, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. I kind of like the plate on the outside because it seems like a very quick, easy fix, Yeah, personally. Oh, what am I supposed to talk about? I don't know. Okay, so Fit House project in Morocco is the first phase will be a 30 square meters classroom. They gave us a two week deadline, which is good because you know nothing gets completed without a deadline. So within this two weeks, we have to calculate the high level cost cost for the facade, the roof. I don't think we have to do the costing or design for that. I think they will stick with the one they have done. So that will be designed and decided by the people over there. We're gonna install toilet in classroom. No teaching. Not this time. Not yet, not yet. On foundation. Foundation, no. They will, no. I think they'll just go with the concrete blocks. So for this Moroccan school, you just do the calculation for the OSB panels and then the calculation for the facade. Window. Yes, thank you. Uh, windows and doors, we can calculate the cost for that. Am I missing anything for it? Morocco? Have you thought about the main material that you want to use for the kitchen? I suggest going OSB so we can like minimize the suppliers we do with. Another popular option was plywood with laminate, but that's expensive because plywood is three times the cost of OSB. If you find any other material, you can let us know. For now, we go with OSB first, okay? You already have this, that's great, okay? Now decide how many cabinets you need, shelves, mm -hmm. this one, cabinets, shelf. Calculate the cost of this from the size of <laughs> <laughs> this is such a bad drawing, but for the 2.5, 1.25, calculate how many boards you need to cut out for to get this, okay? To make kitchen cabinets, you need at least 20 millimeters for boards. So the cost for one OSB panel, 2.5 by 1.25, 11 millimeters is 1,800 yen in Turkey. 11 millimeters too thin.